The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Broadway Lullaby, starring June Haver and Dennis O'Keefe. Morton Downey is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Now, tonight's Family Theater host, Morton Downey. We think of home as a happy place where there should be love and laughter. But we know from experience, home also means troubles and worries, illnesses and tears. And yet misfortunes and failures can help us to a new unity in the home. Because those who suffer together are often more closely united in bonds of understanding and of love. It's not trials and difficulties that destroy a home. It is lack of trust and faith that does that. Faith in God, faith in our loved ones and in ourselves, faith in the future. That's the way to happiness, even in the dark days of disappointment. And the simple expression of our faith through the daily practice of family prayer will do more to give us strength in difficulty and courage in failure than anything else in the world. God's help, God's blessing on our home is the wonderful reward of daily family prayer. Morton Downey will return at the close of tonight's family theater presentation, Broadway Lullaby, starring June Haver and Dennis O'Keefe. The name is Connie Lamont, occupation, chorus girl. I've been in the line of the best Broadway hits for the last five years. But my first real break was a good spot and a specialty number in the new show, Merry-Go-Round. Everybody said it was in the cards as a smash hit. It would run at least a year or so. I was fixing for a round of good times. Yeah, this was good old Broadway, and I loved it. I'd learned my way around, knew all the answers. At least, I thought I did until I hit smack up against the simplest problem in the world. It really started the morning of the opening night of the new show. Okay, kids, that'll do till something better comes along. And it better be better than good tonight. Opening night's your future, kiddies. Now, if you're smart, go home and get some shut-eye. So you'll be glamour fresh for the big moment. <laughs> Nothing like sleep for the old and decrepit, Tom. Think so, Connie? Well, if I felt any more awake right now, I'd start dancing on the ceiling. We'll manage to struggle along without a ceiling specialty, Connie. Well, anything you say, boss. I... I wish you really meant that. Huh? Meant what? Well, look. Look, I want to talk to you. Come on in here a minute. Sure. Sure, boss. Nothing wrong, is there, Tom? Maybe. Maybe not. That depends on you. On me? I don't get it. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, now, look, Tom, if I'm out of line, I wish you'd tell me. I know I kid around a lot, but, well, I thought I was delivering a good job. There's nothing wrong with your work, Connie. It's your play that's got me bothered. Play? Look, little Eva, your Uncle Tom's been on Broadway a couple more years than you, but he hit the big time from out of a small town, just like you. So maybe he's interested. Well, thanks, Tom, but... I've seen him come and I've seen him go. I'm trying to warn you, kid. It's an old story. Broadway's good to kids like you when they're young and beautiful. But burn yourself out running wild around this town. It won't take longer than 24 hours for Broadway to forget you. Well, now, don't dramatize the tragedy, Tom. A gal's got to have fun. Sure, have fun. But don't make a career of it. If you work hard and live right, in show business, it's just like any other business. You'll be a success. But if you think you can play as hard as you work, you better get out before you're thrown out. Tom, you're not giving me my notice. Not yet, Connie. I'm just telling you to get smart. Meet the right guy and settle down. I've heard about some of your escapades. 
You're getting the rep of being a crazy youngster. Now, wait a minute, Tom. I've already waited, kid. In fact, I've given up waiting. Now get back to your hotel and get some rest. Well, thanks for the advice, but I got a date for the afternoon. All right. Play it your own way. Sure, I'm watching myself because I got a career all planned. You've got talent, but you can't go now, on. don't worry about me, Tom. I'm not going to make the mistake of settling down and mixing a career and a family. I can take care of myself. I hope so, Connie. I hope so. This is your hotel, miss. Right. Gee, I didn't think you had so much speed in this old delivery cart. <laughs> Thanks, miss. Always delighted to help a beautiful lady in distress. Thank you. So long. So long, pal. Oh, Miss Lamont, where have you been all afternoon? The desk has been busy with your phone calls. Now, please and... don't hold me up now, Mr. Dingle. I've only got two hours before curtain call. Well, someone from the theater called every half hour. It must be important, but he wouldn't leave a message. Oh, that that's Tom checking up on me. It's nothing important. Well, there's something else. Save it, Mr. Dingle. I'm in a hurry. Well, I wanted to tell you that you have a visitor. A visitor? Who? She said that she's your twin sister. She looked like you, so I let her into your room to wait. Jane? M my sister Jane here? Well, she had a little baby with her. I didn't want her sitting around the lobby. Yeah, you did it right, Mr. Dingle. Oh, thank you. You know, being manager of a hotel yeah, requires... Yeah, I know. I'll see you later. later. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I... Oh, Bill. Uh, Mr. Parker, I'm... In a big hurry, as usual. Yes. Well, you see... Uh... It's your opening night, and your sister arrives suddenly in town with a baby that has been bawling all over the second floor for half the afternoon. Oh. But it's a pleasant change from the usual noise and distraction that comes from room 25. Well, I like your nerve. I'm sorry I can't say the same. Now, don't try to get me mad, Bill Parker. Maybe it would be a good idea. Oh, you... <laughs> you stuffed shirt. Why, I think you deliberately annoyed her, Mr. Parker. Well, it's about time something annoyed that crazy kid. Why, Mr. Parker, she's a fine girl. Just young and young, uh, well, she likes a good time. That's what's wrong, Dingle. Everyone excuses her for every... Ah, uh, forget it. By the way, any mail for me? Hmm, I'll see. Nope, nothing. Thank you. Yes. Ah, oh, sounds like she's back again. Uh, do you think you can get some warm milk for the baby? Why, this is most unusual. You know children are not allowed in the hotel. Why, Dingle, I think you're trying to annoy her. But a poor little baby is starving, Mr. Dingle. Certainly, Dingle. It's a serious situation. Please, Mr. Parker, you're distracting me. I'll see what I can do, Miss Lamont. And you'll have to get a feeding bottle you can send down to the corner drugstore. <laughs> oh, this is most irregular. There's no one oh, to go... Oh, thank you, Mr. Dingle. Thank you so much. <laughs> My land's a feeding bottle. What next? Uh, the drugstore, Dingle. The drugstore. Come in. Oh, here it is, but, Miss Lamont, this is most irregular. You're a dear, Mr. Dingle. Oh, the milk is warm. Oh, this is fine. Here. Here you are, Dickie boy. <laughs> I see how simple it is. Oh, uh, Mr. Dingle, you met my sister, Mrs. Dawson? Yes, we met. Mr. Dingle was very kind to me. Uh, thank you. She's not well, so she wanted to stay with me for a few days. You see, her husband just died, and... Miss Lamont, uh, may I speak to you for a moment outside? Why, yes, yes. Miss Lamont, this is simply out of the question. We cannot permit children in this hotel. Personally, I have no objection. But the management regulations are specific. But I can't throw my sister out. She's seriously ill. Only came to me because, well, because I was the only one she could come to. You see, her husband was no good, but she stuck by him hoping that, well, that's over now. And I just want to give her a few days to... No, Miss Lamont, I must insist. Well, look, I have a show. Gosh, I only have an hour to make it. Now, when I get back, I tell you what. Tomorrow I'll find some place. One night won't hurt. Anyway, no one will know about it. Well, what with the way that child's been crying? Well, he's I... all right now, and tomorrow I promise you. Please. But this may cost me my job, Mr. Don't Lamont. worry, Mr. Dingle. Everything will be all right. And thanks. Thanks, Mr. Dingle. Oh, dear. Connie, I know what he said. Believe me, I wouldn't do this to you, but there was no other place for me to turn. Ah, oh, forget it, sis. Only you should have written and told me you were coming to New York. 
Joe was no account, sis. You never should have married him. I know that now, but... Well, you've always had your career, Connie. I guess you don't know what it's like to be alone and lonely. And then someone comes along and... Well, you just don't know what it's like, Connie. Sis, there, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You know that. But please, let's not have a crying act. I got a show to do tonight. I'm sorry, Connie. You always seem to be able to manage everything. I thought perhaps Sure, you'd... sis. I'll manage it. Just leave it to me. Now, you lie down and get some rest. Whatever you say. But I thought I should go to a hospital. I've had this pain in my chest now for months. Sis, I'm going to do everything I can, but right now I'm getting so mixed up I can't think. Let's wait until tomorrow, can we? As it is, I'll probably be late. Just rest here and I'll come back right after the show. Mr. Dingle, I'll have to race to make it. Did you call the taxi? It's waiting outside. Good luck to you, Thanks. Connie. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Mr. Dingle. Oh, well, Connie. Connie. I've been waiting for you. Got my chariot all steamed up. What for? Oh, I thought you might need some rapid transportation. Don't worry about me, Bill. I can take care of myself. Well, Dingle, there's appreciation for the offer of a helping hand. Well, she's all upset, Mr. Parker. Her sister's sick, and, well, I really admire the way she stands up to protect her. I think she's... A uh, good kid. I know. You said it before. Well, I can say it again because it's true. Well, Dingle, I'll let you know how she does. Oh, you're going to the opening? Well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Hmm, I see. Just what do you see, Mr. Dingle? More than meets the eye, Mr. Parker. More than meets the eye. <laughs> Wonderful job. Oh, yeah, yeah, you really came through like troopers. Oh, Connie. Yeah, Tom. What's all the hurry? I gotta get home. You mean you got a date to celebrate already? Well, yeah, yeah, I got a date. Oh. Yes. Yes, she's, uh, she's got a date with me. Huh? Oh, oh, Bill. Uh, yeah, Tom, I got a date with Bill. You understand. Sure, kid, I understand. And I may as well tell you why I wanted this date with you. We had a good show tonight. But you better start practicing that ceiling specialty. You can't stay in this show hoofing the way you did the opening. What do you mean, Tom? Wasn't it good? If you want the truth, kid, it was terrible. Why, you, what's the idea of trying to knock her down? You don't know what she's just going through. It's all right, Bill. Good night, Tom. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, Connie. Connie, I'm coming with you. We have a date tonight, remember? <laughs> Bill, it was nice of you to see me home. Nothing to it. Tonight, I just happened to feel like a Boy Scout. W was my number really as bad as Tom said, Bill? Well, I, uh... I've seen you do better, Connie. Gee, you know, you've been around a long time, but... Well, this is the first time you've ever gone out of your way to be friendly. Maybe that's because this is the first time I thought you needed a friend. Say, fella, cut it out. You talk like you think I'm all washed up. Oh, no, not that. I... So I gave a bad performance tonight, all right? I had things on my mind. But I'll get this whole mess cleared up by tomorrow. Sure. Sure you will, Connie. Good night. Good night, Bill. Jane? Jane? Where are you, Jane? Oh, come on, kid, don't start now. Bill! Bill! Bill, something's happened. Jane isn't here. What is it? What's the matter? I don't What's know. Going, I told her I'd come back right after the show. Oh, but she couldn't have gone and left us. Well, she did. Well, I guess that's the way she had it planned. Don't be too quick saying that, Connie. Oh, I see now what she was up to. Well, if she thinks I'll handle her problems when she walks out on him, she's thinking wrong. Con Connie, Connie, don't talk that way. Your sister's sick. You don't know what she's done. Yeah, I know. 
She got herself in this mess. If she thinks she can leave her baby to me and, and ruin my career, she's got another guest coming. Now, let me tell you something, Connie. Why I went backstage tonight. I've seen you around here for a long time. I've always liked you and thought you were just a crazy kid who liked a good time. But when I heard about the way you wanted to take care of your sister and, and how your number was messed up in the show, well, I... Well, I knew you were the kind of a girl that I wanted you to be. I mean that, Connie. And that's why I don't want to hear you talk like a selfish little brat. Well, well, Mr. Parker, thanks for your, your condescension. So I sound like a selfish brat. Well, yes, that's what I'm going to be. I'll get rid of that kid first thing in the morning. Good night and get off. Good night, Connie. <laughs> Morning, Connie. Oh, it's you. Well, I uh, had an appointment downtown, and before I left, I wanted to tell you that. Oh. Well, good morning, Mr. Dingle. Morning. I see you've been recruited as a housemaid. Now, please, Mr. Parker. This was Miss Lamont's idea, and, well, uh, the baby had to have a bath. Yeah, quite obviously, and you're doing very well, too. You can stay out of this, if you please. We finished our conversation last night. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, Connie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. Well, I. I didn't mean it exactly the way I said it. But you said it. More than I wanted to hear. Well, if there's any way I can help no, you... No, thank I... you. We're doing very well. Yes, we're doing very well. If I only knew how to dry him now... Here, I'll help you. Hey, watch out! Watch out! You'll drop him! Oh, oh, thank you. Gee, I didn't realize he was so slippery. Well, wrap him up in the towel. He's all okay. over soap. Okay, all right, I have him now. My goodness, I never realized there was so much to giving a baby a bath. Yes, I understand it's a regular science. You have to go to school to learn it now. Well, he'll be all right. I've got him. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Oh, Connie, please. Look, like I said, if there's anything I can no, do... No, I'll I... manage all right. And your sister? There's no word from her. Well, what are you going to do? I notified the authorities last night. What else can I do? I can't understand it. She came down to the lobby about a half hour after Miss Lamont left. Said she wanted to get some things for the baby down at the corner drugstore. She didn't intend to come back. And the baby, Connie? I'm going to call up an orphanage. An orphan? Oh, you wouldn't do that. Your sister's baby, you... Oh, wouldn't I? Then you don't know me. Oh, yes. Yes, I do, Connie. I can tell. When you have that little baby in your now, arms, Don't try a... to make me sentimental. Sure, I, I know he's a good kid, but... Well, I've got a job to do. I've got a contract. I can't have him around. You're only kidding yourself, Connie. You can't make a career out of a contract. When that day comes, Mr. Parker, I'll let you know about it. But don't wait to hear from me. All right, Connie. All right. That's the way you want it. The only thing you can do, Boy Scout, is to locate my sister before I locate an orphanage. You know, Connie, a gal like you is riding in only one direction. What do you mean? You're riding for a big fall, Connie. Goodbye. Oh, he gets under my skin when he starts giving with the speeches. Oh, I don't know, Miss Lamont. He means well. Oh, so you're on his side now. Okay, we'll keep the baby then. Oh, no, 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 Miss Lamont. No, we just can't do that. Hotel regulations and... All right. Get me that phone book there. Here, hold him for a minute. Now, uh, wh what do you look up? Well, I don't know, and... Uh... I don't know why I should feel ashamed of what we're doing. Ashamed? Well, it seems like abandoning a helpless child, and he's, he's, he's such a cute youngster. Uh, you see the way he smiles at you and holds out his hand? Yes, I see. That's just the trouble. Gee, if I let myself go for a minute, this kid's going to get me. I got to be... Uh, hello? Miss Lamont? Yes? Captain Bradshaw, Missing Persons Bureau on the phone. Oh, I'll speak to him. Miss Lamont? Yes? You put through a description last night, your sister, Mrs. Jane Dawson. Yes, have you any report of her? She was checked in the city hospital last night at 9.30. <gasps> the city hospital? Captain, is there anything else? I mean... Well, you can call the hospital for details if you will, please. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you. Thanks. What happened, Miss Lamont? Yeah, I don't know. You stay here with the baby, Mr. Dingle. I'll be back just as soon as I can. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, what room is Mrs. Dawson in? Uh, Jane Dawson? Mrs. Jane Dawson? Yes. D, D. Oh, Dawson, uh, second floor, women's ward. Uh, take the elevator to your right there. Thank you. Main floor. All out, please. Connie. Bill, what are you doing? Uh, I hope I found your sister before you found the orphanage. But, Bill, I, I didn't... Connie. Uh, yeah? Connie, I've talked to your sister. How is she? Not good, Connie. Both her lungs are affected. Oh, is it? It's TB. Oh. oh I've got to get up to see her right away. No, no, take it easy. But I have to. Bill, will she get well? Oh, the doctor didn't say... Uh, in the advanced stages. Oh, oh, Bill, to think of what I said about it last night. Oh, don't get yourself all worked up, kid. Come on, come on, let's go out and walk around before you go up to no, see her. No, no, I want to go up now. She was just going to sleep when I left her. Well, then I'll sit there until she wakes up. Then I'll go up with you. No, Bill, I want to be alone with her. You understand, don't you? Okay. Okay, then, Connie. I'll wait down here for you. I wish you wouldn't, please, because, well, because th there's someone I have to see alone after I spend a little time with Jane. Connie, there's one thing I want you to know. You know, <laughs> if I can help in any way, Connie, I... Thanks, Bill. Believe me, I'm sorry for what happened. You've been a real friend. Thank you, Connie. Connie. Yes? I love you, Connie. Just what's the idea of barging into my office at three o'clock in the afternoon? You should be home resting instead of oh, being here. please, Tom, I'm tired and this is important. Tired? You look burned out. How do you expect to give a show tonight? That's just it. I'm not giving a show tonight. Uh, oh, now look here. You've got a contract. And according okay, to Okay, this... you can hold me to the contract. I'll give a show. That's the best I can give. But as soon as you can get a replacement, I'm quitting. Say, what's all this about? You worked your fool head off for five years to get a good break. And then when you get it, you flop. All right, so I've got other things to do. Connie. Connie. I don't know what's got into you. I always thought you and I had show business and maybe some other things in common. I thought you'd get over your wild streak and maybe we'd be going places together. You know, a real career. <laughs> oh, no. What's so funny about that? Oh, it's not funny at all, except that it happens to be my second proposal today. <laughs> oh. All right, Connie, if that's how it's going to be. It'll take a few days to break in someone for your spot, but you needn't worry. No hard feelings, Tom? Nah, kid. I'm just sorry you forgot about that career. Oh, I've still got a career, Tom. A new career. <laughs> Mr. Dingle? Mr. Dingle, where are you? We're down here, Miss Lamont. Oh, that's all I need to have that baby disappear. I wanted to give the maid a chance to clear up the room, so Mr. Parker suggested we could set up temporary headquarters here. No objections? Oh. Oh, no, none, Bill. Uh, I uh, guess you'd better take him, Miss Lamont. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dingle. Quiet there now, Dickie Park. I don't like to keep insisting, but I'm still worried about having him here and... Well, I've taken care of arranging for him at the hospital until I can make a real home for him myself. Well, you still didn't decide, Connie, about me making a permanent headquarters for you and uh, Dickie Boy. No, Bill, but I'm, I'm thinking it over seriously. You see, right now I'm in love. Connie. Yeah, I'm in love with Dickie Boy. Because he was the answer to the simplest problem in the world. Hey, hey, you must have had a good word about your sister. Yeah, it may take a long time, but the doc says with good care she'll get well. Oh, she'll have the best of care, Connie. But, uh, this, uh, this simplest problem... Oh, I thought you knew that. Why, why, Bill taking care of a baby ought to be the simplest problem for any girl. 
I don't know, honey. It seems you needed a little help. Me? Need <laughs> well, help? Sure, oh, did dingle. you see how he stopped crying the minute I picked him well, up? Well, he probably had a pin. Well, all I need is just a little more rehearsal, and I'll be the world's best mother. Well, what about me? You. Yeah, a little more rehearsal, and I'll be the world's best father. You'll be the world's... Oh! If we make this a permanent partnership. Okay, Bill. It's a deal. Connie. Connie, you really mean it. Well, with a ready-made family... Uh, you mean a ready-made family to uh, begin with, Connie? Broadway Lullaby has starred Dennis O'Keefe and June Haber. Here again is tonight's family theater host, Morton Downey. We all admire those who are willing to sacrifice themselves to help others, those who are generous and unselfish. A kind deed is more than the good that is done at the moment, for kindness is something that is passed on from one person to another and can go circulating through the world. People who are cheerful and self-sacrificing are giving to others a legacy of inspiration that has passed from one generation to another, a legacy of example that can inspire men and women everywhere. And in a home where parents are thoughtful and unselfish, where children are appreciative and thankful and generous, there is a true happiness, despite the disappointments and the difficulties of daily life. That's the way every home should be, the way our homes will be, if we have started the daily practice of family prayer. Because with God's help, with God's blessing, families that pray together Stay together. This is Morton Downey saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to June Haber and Dennis O'Keefe for their performances this evening and to Virginia Cook for writing tonight's play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Dink Trout, Jim Nusser, Gene Layton, Gene Young, and Rolf Sedan. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Alexander Knox and Stanley Clements in Verdict Guilty. Your host will be Dan Daly. <laughs> This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Alexander Knox and Stanley Clements with Dan Daly as host. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>